Jaleesa, let's get into this book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12. Read this one verse with me. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness on you. We're dealing with tonight shifting to righteousness. Shifting to righteousness. Shifting to righteousness. Now, this is amazing and this is powerful because a lot of people still do not get, and we're going to explain why people could be in church, people could be raised by a great family, and they don't come out righteous. They don't come out righteous. They never shift to righteousness. And without that shift, your blessings are not long term. Without that shift, because if you're not righteous, the opposite of righteousness is unrighteousness and wickedness. God has a plan for the wicked, and he has a plan for the righteous. When you are on point with God, the world is yours. There is no limit in what God would do for you if you are operating in righteousness. But if you are not operating in righteousness, your days are numbered. This is why the Bible tells us in Hosea, hey, do yourself a favor. Tell somebody, do yourself a favor. He said, so to yourself righteousness. He said, do yourself a favor and sow unto yourself righteousness. Because if you don't sow unto yourself seeds of righteousness, you cutting yourself short. Oh, my God. Shifting to righteousness. Now, watch this. One of the major things about a stick ship, and we had a stick ship pickup truck. One of the first vehicles we ever had in the church was the stick ship pickup truck. And my God, I'm telling you, I messed up the clutch. And when you mess up the clutch, you cannot shift any gears. You cannot change gears with a bad clutch. And the clutch represents your character. Clutch represents your character. Righteousness is your character. If you, the reason why so many people never go anywhere, never amount to much in life, is because their clutch is messed up. I need, I feel like preaching. Carolina, watch this. Their character is messed up, so consequently, they end early. They don't go anywhere. Good God Almighty. You're going to mess up your clutch in sin. You're going to destroy your clutch in gossip. You're going to ruin your clutch in mess. These are some of the things that messes up our clutch and causes us not to be able to go to another ram. Deuteronomy 25 and 16, it says, For all that do such things and all that do unrighteously, somebody shout unrighteously, are in an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, that's a, uh, there's not many things in the Bible that God calls in an abomination. So when he calls an abomination, he means I really don't like them bad spirits. I really don't like you doing people wrong that do you right. I really don't like you carrying a spirit of unforgiveness when you're so full of sin and I forgive you all the time. That is unrighteous. And when you are unrighteous, you tap your clutch, least, And then you don't go nowhere. They put that car in the junkyard. You head it for the junkyard if you don't fix this thing. Hallelujah. Preach Holy Ghost. Let me give you the realest thought ever told the sign to bless your soul, number 1033. Realest thought ever told the sign to bless your soul, 1033. Stop focusing on people doing wrong. Show them the advantages of being right. Show people the advantages of being right. Don't focus so much on people being wrong. That's why I said in Hosea 10 and 12, sow to yourself in righteousness. And guess what? The advantage is you're going to reap in mercy. You're going to reap some stuff. Because we all need some mercy here. We all need God to, 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 to give us some grace and some mercy. And when you sow to yourself in righteousness, when you do right, you're going to reap some stuff from God. You're going to reap some mercy. But when you are unrighteous and you don't forgive nobody, and you don't, you don't bless nobody, and you keep bad spirits around, God said, you're cutting yourself short. Good God Almighty. You won't get no mercy. And guess what? We all going to need some mercy. If you are so righteous, you got to make sure you never sin again. It's okay to be self-righteous, but just don't sin again. 
Because if you sin again and you self-righteous and you don't give nobody any mercy, you're going to reap no mercy. Good God Almighty. Common sense word you should have already heard, number 1034. Common sense word you should have already heard. Seeking God is the secret ingredient. Seeking God is the secret ingredient. And that's why so many of you out here are so blessed because your secret ingredient is you constantly seeking God. Hosea 10 and 12, sow it to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your father ground. Why? Because it is time to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. What's all this foolishness and craziness going on in the world? People are not seeking the Lord. People are abandoning the Lord. And they cannot keep a right mind. I just told Tatiana, she came to me and told me, I didn't have a good day at school. Uh, I guess she's in the third grade. She's in the fourth grade, so I didn't have a good day at school. So what happened? She said, a little girl who I thought was my best friend, she went and told the teacher, allow me. I said, oh, Tatiana, don't worry about it. Oh, your friends are here. Your friends are in God. These little heathen Gentile baby kids at your school, they cannot do anything right for long. Don't expect to have any friends from these little heathen lying children because this is all they know. This is all they know. Knowledge you can't get in college, number 1035. Knowledge you can't get in college, number 1035. Righteousness is a gift from God. Righteousness is a gift from God. Everybody don't have this gift. It is a gift to be righteous. It is, Kiki, it is a gift from God to be righteous. I never understood this until I started preparing on this message. It is a gift from God to be, to be righteous. Oh, my God. Hosea 10 and 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fall of ground. For it is time to seek the Lord. What? Till he come and rain righteousness on you. It's a gift. We can't do it by ourselves. We can't be righteous on our own. It takes God to come in and give us the gift of righteousness. It's the spirit of God that blesses us with that gift. And everybody don't have that gift. Oh, my God. Oh, we're going to get a little deeper in here. Tell us about I'm tired of it taking so long. I'm, I'm tired of it taking so long. If it's taking so long, you got to check your clutch. If you think it's so long, then you got to check your clutch. Maybe you've torn up your clutch. People try everything except righteousness. They try everything except righteousness. Tell somebody, I'm not trying to shift back to my mess. I'm trying to shift into righteousness. I'm not trying at least to shift back into my mess. I'm trying to shift gears to righteousness. Listen, God does not accept everything, and God doesn't accept everybody, but he does accept a major feature of himself, which is righteousness. God will accept you if you are righteous. This is what he told Abel. He told Cain when Abel presented unto him the better offering. He said, my God, if you do good, won't not good be with you? But if not, then sin lieth at the door. He said, don't be mad at your brother. You can be like your brother. A lot of people are mad at us because we're doing right, and they got a bad spirit because we're just doing right. <laughs> They're mad at you because you're in the house of the Lord. They're mad at you because you're serving. They're mad at you because you're blessing the church. They're mad at you because you're doing right by God. And they got an attitude. And God said, sin lied at your door. Because evil communication corrupt good manners. And a lot of times we deal with some evil, wicked folks out there in the world. And we think we're just going to hop to church and be skippity dooly on fire for God. <laughs> We think that thing just gonna we just gonna stay the same, baby. You get corrupt and don't even know it. What is God's name? God's name is Jehovah Titsanu. Jehovah Sitkanu, meaning the God of my righteousness. Jehovah Sitkanu. The T is silent. The God of my righteousness. He is righteousness, and He will rain righteousness on us, and that will cause us to shift to another level. It'll take us higher than we can even imagine. Oh, my God. Remember, because he said, I told you Sunday, because he could swear by none greater, he swore by himself. Let me tell you this. This should have been a thought that can't be taught. That thought never taught. A word like you've never heard. 
But here he goes. You can never be closer to God than when you are being righteous. His name is Jehovah Sitkanu. You can never be closer to the God of my righteousness than when you are being righteous. And you can never be farther than the God of righteousness than when you are being wicked. Than when you are being evil. Than when you are being low down. Than when you are being unforgiving. You are a long way from God. And that thing don't end well when you are a long way from God. Sister Kenita, what's your famous comment you used to say? What about now? How you like that? How did it come out for you? How did it work out for you? Keep trying to do our own way without God. And I'm going to say what Kenita said. How did it come out for you? How did it come out for you being low down, being shysterous? How did it come out for you? It won't end well. You have to be smart enough to say to yourself, what's going to happen to me if I don't do the right thing? You have to be smart enough. I keep telling you the story about when the Memphis City Schools had overpaid us in our tutoring program. They overpaid us. They, yes, my child can tutoring. They overpaid us about $30,000. And naturally said, what shall we do? He said, give it back. Because you have to be, the, you have to be smart enough to consider what happens if I don't do the right thing. Do I want our church name in the paper because they found out in an audit two or three years down the road, we took some money. You have to be smart enough to be righteous. How is that? Proverbs 22 and 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. You have to be smart enough to understand what's going to happen in the future. What happens if I let go of this good woman, good God Almighty? These guys ain't smart enough. They ain't been smart enough, does it? You'll never get another one like that again. Not smart enough to foresee the future. You got to ponder, I say, ponder your steps. A wise man, a wise woman will ponder their steps. You just don't do anything. What will happen to me before the eyes of God? Good God Almighty. If I don't do this thing right, if I don't fix this thing, what will God do to me? People don't, they're not smart enough at least to think that thing through down the road. Oh God. That's why real righteousness has to be in your nature, in your essence, in every fiber in your body. It's in your nature. This is why we just said, we're going to learn tonight why people can come to church for years and they don't become righteous. We can raise our children the best way, give them the best things in the world. Adam and Eve gave both of them boys everything. Cain didn't come out righteous. Why not? It was not in his nature. And if it's not in their nature to be righteous, we can preach to them love, forgiveness, mercy, grace. They're going to walk out here still bound. Because it's not in their nature. Your nature is who you were born to be. That's why little children, they'll give them names when they were first born. The star of God. Jehovah is with thee. They can see their nature. They call Jacob Trista because he tried to steal his brother's birthright even in the room. So his name meant Trista. Trista. And God changed it to Israel when he changed his nature. This is kind of heavy. This is, this is a PhD in this word tonight. Romans 2 and 14. Watch this. When the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, or law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness of their thoughts, mean while accusing or else excusing one another. What does that mean? Mother Kinda, and Peach used to say something when I was a little boy that I did not understand until I became a man of God. She used to say, some people are better by, she was talking about some of these Christians, some people are better by nature than we are by practice. That's what my auntie used to say when I was a little boy in elementary. She used to say that all the time. Some people are better by nature. That's why when some of you all get into the church, you blow up because you was already good. <laughs> You already, it was in your nature. Had the stuff in the Bible. We didn't have to preach it to you. You just did this by nature. You was a giver by nature. You were a servant by nature. You were on fire. You were lower by nature. And when you was lowered in the hood in the streets and you got saved, it was easy for you to be loyal to God. 
because it was in your nature. Hallelujah. This is who we are. It was easy for me to become a real man of God because it was in my nature. I did this stuff as a little child. It was in my nature. Oh, God. And that's what's happening to these folks. They're not right. It's not in their nature. Today, more than ever, people are slick, try to get over. They think they are the smartest person in the room, so they are stuck in no man's land because they have torn up their clutch. So they are not going anywhere, haven't been anywhere, and not getting anywhere because they tore up their clutch. You ever wonder why you can pray and intercede for some people and they never get better? It's because it's in their nature to be crooked and they can't help it. See, saints, they pray for spouses to get better, laid out at this altar, cried out all night long, just waited years for them to get better, and they never changed. And when your prayers weren't powerful, it just, you were dealing with a crook. And the Bible says, and I never preach this on Sunday morning because I don't want the people to think there's no help for us. But the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, that which is crooked cannot be made straight. So some people are so crooked, no matter how good we are to them, no matter how we bless them, you can give to them. Some of our family members, we blessed them, we gave to them, we helped them, we was down time, and they still talked about us behind our backs. Because it wasn't in their nature to be righteous. It's in their nature to take from us. It's in their nature to get everything they can from us. And then think we're a fool for helping them because they ain't righteous. They don't see it as love. They see us as fools. But before God, that's why he keep elevating. He keep blessing us. He's like, I'm going to bless this fool because you think he's a fool. Now, I'm going to bless this fool and leave you where you are. Well, we done prayed for folks and they never changed. Never changed. One of the greatest things my father used to say. My mother here right now. One of the greatest things you say, do right and right will follow you. All you say, do right, right will follow you. That's all he say, do right and right will follow you. And then there's another thing he used to say, put him on the screen. He's like, put him on the screen. There's another thing that he used to say that used to blow my mind. He said, treat people the way you want to be treated. That was John Kai. That's how he raised me as a little boy. Treat people the way you want to be treated. How you, so that taught me, if I don't want nobody talking about me, I'm not going to talk about nobody. If I don't want anybody gossiping about me, I'm not going to gossip about anybody. If I want to be blessed by somebody, then I want to be a blesser and a giver. So he taught me, treat people the way you want to be treated. And then when I come from, became a man of God, I understood that was the golden rule when Jesus said, do unto others if you will have others do unto you. But people are so crooked. You want God to forgive you. You want to be treated with forgiveness, but you bound and hold a bad spirit. It's not acceptable before God. You have to treat people the way you want it to be treated. That's how you become righteous. Oh, God. So listen. listen. So we're having an event, a baby shower for Sister LaQuinta. And it's not until the 25th of this month. And it's at the Collierville Clubhouse. So when one of the saints went there to make the payment and turn in the applications, and then they was picking up the key. No, they weren't going to pick up the key because you don't get the key at least to the day before, if that, if not early in the morning. And the lady told her, said, oh, I take care of Pastor Kiner. I'm going to give you the key right now. Yeah, the key is, Keisha, three weeks from now, do right, right or folly. But I'm always sending little blessing gifts. Always sowing. Always giving. So right comes right back to me. Life is so simple and so easy and so blessed everywhere. Banker, I, call, I was today <laughs> doing a transaction at Perga Bank, and the guy, the manager was out there taking a cigarette break, and I was in the drop top. I drove around, I saw, I said, this is the car I'm driving that you helped me get. He said, he saw me, got the key. He said, I know I saw you when you was just sitting in the lot. He said, I saw you. Now watch this. 
All I did when I wanted the car, I just picked up the phone, called and said, hey, I want this car. I see this car. I want this car. I get this car. They wrote that thing up within 30 minutes and got the car. No application. No credit check. <laughs> None of all that stuff that they, because what? When you a man of your word, <laughs> when you do business and they know, my ain't peace taught us this, Mother Kyra. Always know, have a good relationship with a banker, with your lawyer, with your doctor. Because I impeach them, say, if I need some money, they had the banker in the pocket. The banker knew them. So when people know you, and they know your character, and they know you're going to pay them back, I pay them back in a couple of weeks. I just want to boost up my credit. I just want to boost up my credit. But at the same time, it's powerful when you have a name and you can get things done because when you do right, right will follow you. You pay your bills right, right will follow you. Oops, I got this car. I got this car. I got, they said it this. They said it this. They said it this. Right will follow you. Good God Almighty. <laughs> Mr. Wade, earlier, I, I told her to look up what it costs for, for this certain car insurance. So, I didn't know what my what I would pay for. She said the Lincoln, the Lincoln Continental, the Cadillac Escalade truck, and what other cars name is that? The GMC. I pay what? Two hundred and fifty nine dollars. And I know for three cars, and some people pay five hundred dollars for a hoopty. Two hundred and fifty nine dollars. For three cars. They wanted to give Mr. Wade one car. For what? Three of those? Nine? Something? I said, Jesus, where does that come from? Being righteous. Paying your stuff. Putting your stuff in order. The Bible said, oh, no man. But love. All this righteousness. You reap so much stuff. That's why the Bible so in your self-righteousness. Three cars can either. Brand new basement, $259. A roof crisp meal. <laughs> 300, 200, and $59. Oh my God. Look at it. But where does that come from? Not just doing right to other people, doing right to your bill, man. Doing right to everybody. We're going to get a little deeper. Get a little deeper. So listen, Reverend, it has taken me 50 years. To learn, just like everybody can't be a surgeon, everybody can't be righteous because it's a calling. He has to rain righteousness on us. Everybody can't be a surgeon, everybody can't be righteous. It's a calling. With that revelation, Pam, I don't go crazy over people's foolishness anymore. They don't have it. They ain't fit to mess with. I don't go crazy. I don't let people bad ways, spirits, and ad. I expect it because righteousness is a calling system. Everybody ain't called to that level. And when people read what they saw, stop letting people drive you crazy because they not who they supposed to be. If they not who they supposed to be, it's because they ain't called to that level. They ain't called to be like us. They, ain't ha they don't have our ilk. And I tell you, I don't mess with people of your ilk. Meaning your nature, your spirit, your ways ain't right, good God Almighty. Because unless you never sin, then you got the, rock, the right to walk around holier than thou. But if you a sinner, how dare you? Good God Almighty. 50 years it took me to understand. It's a calling. Everybody can't do it. Everybody's not ordained to do it. Hosea 10 and 12, so to yourselves in righteousness. Do you do what's right in God's eyes? Because that's the most important thing. That's the thing about being blessed, doing what's right in God's eyes. When people trust you, do you, def do you, do you defile they trust? Do you, do you break the trust they have in you? Do, when people trust, is that right in God's eyes? Second Chronicles 14 and 2, and Asa did that was right. All through the Bible, it says this. And so-and-so did that was right. And David did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did what was right and good in the eyes of the Lord. 
the eyes of the Lord are watching us. I told my mother earlier. I said, Mother, can I tell you something that my daddy told me? I'm going to tell you something. Tell that to your siblings that basically abandoned you when they was teenagers, fighting you for their money, and I took care of you when I was a teenager. I said, my daddy used to always say this. He used to say, I'm going to tell you what the Lord love. Now, I said, I'm going to tell you what the, she was looking at me like, oh. I said, I'm telling you what the Lord love. Bruce love when I say that. I'm telling you what the Lord, I ain't telling you what the Sir Jerichiah, I'm telling you what the Lord love. It's not righteous to have them heathens thinking that you're not being taken care of when I gave up everything for you. I'm telling you what the Lord love. And if God don't like it, you in trouble. I'm telling you what the Lord love, what my daddy taught. I'm telling you what the Lord love. When somebody blessing you and take care of you, and then these fools thinking you're not being taken care of right, you got to tell them the truth. Because who else going to give up their bed? Your bedroom now is bigger than half your house. Who else makes sure before you go to sleep every day, before you get in the shower, fold your towel to make sure you got a fresh towel when you get in the shower? Who else? When you spend all your money, I put money in it in your account, you don't even know it. Don't even say a word. When you, we got food in the refrigerator and you still want some KFC, you get your KFC. I said, you made me eat leftovers all my life. We couldn't go. She laughing now. I told in her face today, I said, you made me eat left though. We never went to no McDonald's. I probably think about once in my life we went to McDonald's. Because what? We had hot dogs in the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm talking about, bam, one time I can, and I'm, I'm hoping it's true. One time in my life we went to McDonald's. I said, you made us eat leftovers. I feed you whatever you want, good God Almighty. So I'm telling you what the Lord love. Do right. If I tell it to my mama, I tell it to anybody. I'm telling you what the Lord loves. He don't like ugly. I'm telling you what the, because he watching everything we do and everything you've been treated has been nothing but rights. Good God Almighty. When you can tell folks, I'm telling you what the Lord, this is what I've done before the Lord. Hallelujah. God has seen how I treated you. God has seen how I was there for you. God has seen what I've done for you. You can act like I ain't done nothing. Mr. Amber said something that was so powerful. Sunday, she said, she said, people will gossip about your what offended, what make what you need to offend them, but they'll, they'll never tell what you need to bless them. <laughs> they'll gossip all day long about what you did, at least to make them mad. But they never take that spirit and tell people what you did to bless them. Mom, you better tell them folks the truth. I'm telling you what the Lord love. I said, a matter of fact, tell them. <laughs>